Greetings and welcome back to another fabulous discussion with our friend Coltane. Coltane has recently produced a, an excellent video. I'll be posting a link to that in the low bar. That video is, however, not directly related to the discussion we're about to have. Namely, a very interesting discussion, one that probably is uh, going to be fraught with accusations of all sorts of things, misogyny and generalizations. However, we want to explore the differences in the pursuit and perception of art that exists between men and women. Now, a little introduction before Coltane became the fabulous kangaroo tamer and writer that he is and master of all things uh, graphical and computer related, he was in fact deeply involved in the fine arts. In fact, that's effectively what his training was. And at the time, of course, he uh, was doing this, he managed to gain a fair bit of insight into his peers, uh, first and foremost, his female peers. So, Coltane, why don't we <clears throat> rewind back to those good old days before you uh, tamed, rode, and slew kangaroos. You, you're you trained in the fine arts, yes? Yeah, I majored in painting and sculpture, um, but I was probably best at drawing, but you can't major in that because it's a core subject, right. so... Um, and, I mean, if you have any recollection, what what would you say the sex uh, sex based partition in these classes or was it like fifty fifty or were there more women than men? Ooh. No, well, I mean, this is this is the. I mean, I always find it funny because my mum, being a second wave feminist, is always. She, my mum actually has a, a science degree. She's got several degrees, but one of them is a science mm -hmm. degree, and she always likes to bang on about how. You know, oh, you don't know what it was like back in the back in the 70s when I was going through university. It was such a boys club. And I'm like, bitch, I know exactly what you mean, because in in my case, I was uh, one of two guys in a class of about 12. Um, and as you know, the types of women that uh, go to art school, like they're, they're quite feminist, they're quite cliquish. Um, they make it uh, they make it absolutely clear that you know you're not welcome there. <laughs> it's a it's it's a very very hostile place for a, a guy to go. I would say just by dint of being male. Just by dint of being male. Interestingly, like a lot of other professions, um, yeah. First first year, I was one of two guys in a class of of uh, about twelve. So there was. Yeah, probably a five to one ratio, six to one ratio of uh, guys to girls there. Second year, it was about probably uh, 30, 70. Um, by the time you get to third year, enough women have actually dropped out that it's about 50 50. Hmm. Interesting. There's a uh, women seem to have, and I, I've got friends that have told me similar things like nurses is a great example. Like everyone talks about the gender division in nurses, nurses are 90, 90 percent female. Um, w one friend, a friend of mine's wife, who's a nurse was actually telling me, and she's a feminist. So I, I guess she doesn't really have a, <laughs> a reason to lie about this, but yeah, apparently by the time, Nurses are 90% female, but by the time you actually get to highly specialised um, sub-professions like theatre nursing, um, it ends up being about a 50-50 ratio. Apparently, once once in the profession, a lot of women don't p pursue the um, the further technical training and stuff. Hmm. Well, I, th I think that's, that's uh, observable in, in other fields as well. I mean... Well, the technical sciences and pursuing PhDs and what have you. Um, but it's interesting mm. that you'd find that dropout rate in, in women in, in the arts as well. It's a bit strange. Well, b believe it or not, I mean, art's not all just, you know, um, just free expression and all of that. Um, there, are actually, there are actually some fairly uh, arduous classes um, uh, life drawing is probably one of the harder ones, lots of anatomy study and things like that. And there are um, theory components as well. So it's not it's not so really like uh, just doing whatever you want all day long. There are actually um, assessment components and, and skills that you have to basically learn. Of course, I, I had to, my father pushed me when I was younger, I had to do things like that to still lives, um, the technical aspects. Mm. 
Would, would you say? I mean, yeah. I, I can't really comment on this because, you know, I haven't been involved in the arts in ages. And obviously this would be a generalization. But as far as technical skill is concerned, I have observed women that were quite talented in, real, in the uh, sense of they could replicate things, you know, replicate a still life uh, with almost pinpoint accuracy, or do portraits in the same sense. Um, what, uh, what would your commentary be on that in terms of technical skill? <sighs> You know, it's it's interesting. I saw a uh, there was there was a bit of a controversial article. I can't remember. It was like probably a couple of years ago now, and some some famous artist had had penned an article an op ed about how um, women women can't be good painters basically. Um, like they're just not technically as good as men at painting. And there was, you know, the, the typical bash, backlash that you'd expect from uh, from an article like that. I actually, I actually disagree with it. I've met a lot of technically competent female artists. The big difference is, well, I think there's there's two fundamental differences between the genders when it comes to art, um, particularly art school. The first is not so much their technical ability but their subject matter and the second is how they take critique um i guess i guess in a sense you know it is difficult to take critique when you know you've created something and the the <laughs> your teacher comes over and says certain parts of it are wrong um ideally i guess you'd want to take that advice on board and try and improve but yeah, women I've noticed in art school they they don't take critique as well, and the teachers the teachers really work hard to try and accommodate that. Um, mm. So I would I would say that would be that would be two things that that would be the two big things. They're not incapable of of being technically as good as men, but yeah, they some of them are quite resistant to criticism to improve. You know areas of their technical skill and yeah and the other side of it would be the the subject matter yeah well i mean the as far as resistance resistance to criticism is concerned i mean this is a common thread i see this in online competitive yeah. gaming as well i mean yeah some men mm. will be males will be resistant too but i mean just yesterday i had a i was on playing competitive overwatch and a guy just made a shitty mistake and he owned up to it Nearly cost us the game. We ended up winning at the end of the day, but and we joked about it in the end, like mm. he, you know, he's trying to trick them, get them overconfident. But he admitted he made a mistake and he fucked up. Um, yeah. When I, you know, when I say you know, be careful next time. You know, he's cool with that. A lot most, I wouldn't. A lot of men are. Um, women with a few mm. players I encounter, they're just they're immediately, it's, yeah, hostile, uh, self defensive. Um, you know, you're just being a dick. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm trying to get the well, team together so we can win. You know. Well, I think it may that it may well be related to the subject matter aspect that we'll eventually get to as well, because mm. um, uh, what they they take it personally because of the subject matter that they often you know explore. But um, I have noticed. I mean, I guess in a video game like Overwatch or something. Um, you know, if you say something like that to someone, it can be like, you know, I oh, fuck you. I'm I'm perfectly fine. You're just being an asshole, and you have that exchange, and then you know, the 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 game's over, and you never get matched up with them again in another game. I mean, oftentimes, um, yeah. But I guess it's a different thing when you're going to art school. Um, the the teachers, yeah, they they really really dance around and try to accommodate the uh the the female sort of uh it's, it's just really interesting like yeah there's some things particularly when it comes to life models that you can just get wrong because there is anatomy and perspective and all of that it's not really as much about um you know free expression or whatever whatever if you're trying to actually draw or paint the model that's in front of you and you get your proportions wrong you know that's a that's an objective mistake um but yeah watching the watching the uh teachers try to you know dance around the subject and and uh 
placate the women whilst they're giving technical critique. It's just amazing to watch. In in my second year, um, as I said, like the the rates kind of drop in the second year for women. That like a lot of a lot of the females kind of leave after first year. I in my painting class, there was about three second year painting classes to accommodate the number of of students. And there was about three girls that transferred out of my class because, yeah, they they eventually there was some kind of critique from from the teacher that they didn't like so much so that they basically transferred out of the classroom. Hmm. Um, it's it's <laughs> it is what it is, I guess. It's just then I don't I don't think the the women were as capable of, of as of taking critique well that and i think you can see a subtle or perhaps not so subtle manifestation of this in in the field of evolutionary uh, psychology as well i'm trying to remember the guy's name um well i had this maybe a year and a half ago i had a you know, an evolutionary psychologist on there was another one I remember he had some manifesto that <laughs> evo psych should focus less on you know sex differences and uh, yeah and, I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, but you know what I'm talking about. Talking now, about. Yeah. I think when men are exposed to their own yeah. strange qualities uh, as they've been, as they've evolved uh, from our evolutionary past, we kind of, I mean, we might say, aha, uh-huh, well, that explains that. I mean, women examining themselves, I mean, both men and women have negative aspects, you know. The minute anything negative crops up, it's just, you know, you can't talk about that. And so even there, you see a kind of avoidance of self-criticism and just observation of the self. It seems that mm. women like to talk a lot about themselves, whether it's art or psychology, until something less than savory pops up. And then, well, forget about it. So this seems to be a consistent thread, I would say. Yeah. Well, I mean, that pretty much gets to, I guess, the, the next topic, which is that the subject matter, the big difference, I would say, the biggest difference is subject matter. Um, there seems to be a fundamental different direction where guys kind of look outwards for their inspiration and women look inwards. Um, like if you if you compare uh, M- Michelangelo, for example, like you look at the roof of the Sistine Chapel um amazing stuff and then you look at i guess you would say probably the top the top female artist or the most recognizable female artist is probably frida carlo yeah. and yeah and and every single thing she painted was basically a self-portrait um she had i i can't remember exactly what it was in my head i want to say a car accident but i'm kind of thinking that it'd be too early she had some type of accident that left her with i think a spinal injury and left her barren and yeah an awful lot of her art is basically about centered around the theme that she can't have kids or whatever so yeah i mean essentially you could distill her entire artistic catalog down to her and her vagina um Interestingly, she's actually married to another artist by the name of Diego Rivera. Um, I, I don't know when you put this video together, maybe you can put a picture of hers and a picture of his side by side. He he was actually, at the time during their life, he was actually a more famous artist than she was. Um, and he used to paint these yeah quite bright, um, detailed murals of Mexican life. And yeah, you can just kind of see the his his kind of thing where he's kind of looking at at other people and and um you know like sh- people doing the dances with the sugar skulls and workers and things like that, and she's kind of all focused on all her. Um, I think that's a that's a big difference, and I'm, I suspect that could be one of the reasons why they don't take the criticism so well is because so much of what they do is focused on on themselves that any any kind of criticism that you deliver is basically taken as a personal insult against them yeah yeah well that's right and this is a problem because it it doesn't really allow for self-improvement in 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 that case i mean if you're if you don't have if you are lacking in techniques in art or you make a consistent mistake in an online competitive game or 
there's some behavioral pattern that you can conform to by to the fact that you're a female or a male. Well, I mean, what, you, you can mm. you can take note of that or you can ignore it. Um, yeah. And I wonder if it's related. I, mean, I guess I just might finish to to the the fact that men need need or effectively need in some sense to climb a a societal hierarchy in order to gain status. I mean, you have to be open to self criticism, improvement, uh, bettering yourself if you want to climb the hierarchy, unless you'll you know, you're stuck at the bottom or the middle or wherever you might be. Um, I think. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess that's part of it. I just think it's it's more to do with the fact that, um, in, in the case of art, that men just kind of look outside themselves. They're kind of they're more focused on viewing and and exploring the world around them rather than, you know, themselves. Um, and I mean, to the extent that you do see art that's critical from females, I mean, like someone like Barbara Kruger, for example, uh, you know, feminist artist. She, uh, yeah, a lot of it, a lot of it is centered around, um, you know, the patriarchy and things like that. So it's, it's kind of like, even when they do look outside, it's about how the, uh, the outside is oppressing them. Um, and I, I think it, it's interesting, like, you just look at how it's all devolved now. And <clears throat> like, I actually think Frida Kahlo, I mean, this is what I was saying before. I don't, I think women are, um, capable of, of good technical skills. I mean, Frida Kahlo, I think, is a competent painter. Um, the problem is how many how many fucking self portraits can you look at? Mm. Um, but that kind of that kind of narcissistic focus for their subject matter. I mean, you look at it now; it's kind of deteriorated to a point where you get these you know feminist artists today that essentially you know bleed menstrual blood onto a oh. canvas and that's art now and it's I, I think it's it's devolved and any kind of criticism of it is you know <laughs> it, you know trying to like oppress their their uh expression or something i don't know how i don't really know how bleeding onto a canvas is really expression but well yeah there are a few male oddballs um who uh, do yeah. things, I think, with, like, fecal matter or what have you. But, I mean, this is what we oh. talked about, the red pill chemist and I, to some degree. Is it, I mean, this is obviously a very touchy subject for people, but if you look officially at psycho, psychi, psychiatric and psychological diagnoses, there are allegedly far more male narcissists than there are uh, female narcissists. But the natural inclination for women to look inwards rather than outwards uh, to mm. their sometimes lack of ability to separate themselves from the outside yeah. world that smacks to me of a kind of almost natural inclination towards narcissism uh yeah well yeah, frankly. I, i'm not an expert on this a friend of mine my friend who is like phd psychologist yeah, so was basically that. telling me yeah, he he was basically he's he's mentioned a lot that uh, the the psychiatric um, you know disorders and things like that they're actually they're actually written in a way to exclude certain things. Hmm. Um, for instance, your, your things about psychiatric disorders are written in such a way to exclude religion, religious beliefs, for example, right, because it's so commonplace. I mean, <laughs> ah, I see a thread here. Well, it's in. it's so commonplace. If I might, yeah, it's the you know, commonplace, isn't it? Yeah. Is it? Lots of people are religious, so we're not going to count that. Lots of women are "quote unquote" yeah. narcissistic, so we're not going to count that either. Something along those lines. Basically, yeah, I, I would suspect that, yeah, some of these things are written into basically. He's actually, I don't know whether he was serious or not, but he has actually jokingly said to me that, um. All, basically, he said that all women are crazy, and the uh, the psychological uh, yes um, disorders are written written to basically exclude that. Like he was basically saying that he's married, and he was basically saying my wife acts crazy all the time. Like legitimately, <laughs> um, get gets paranoid over things that are just you know. Um, what do you call it? Don't warrant the paranoia. Uh, 
basically, I think it was. I think the conversation the conversation started because there was some article about how you you shouldn't call women crazy because it causes them to internalize misogyny or something like that. And he's like, "Yeah, but all women are crazy." My wife was acting crazy the other day. Like by any by any psychological standard, what she was doing was crazy. Mm, mm. Um, but you know, it's it's you can't like it, it's it's so commonplace that if you were to actually really apply the uh, the the standards of what's rational to you know some of those behaviours, you'd pretty much have to lock up every woman in a mental asylum. Yeah, well, I, I think you know actual so in the case of men. Actual real-world narcissism mm. is is because it's comparatively rare. Uh, it's it's highlighted mm. because it's not a commonplace phenomenon. I mean, if anything, men are much more used to serving the community and, of course, looking outward. Uh, their reputations depend on it. So when it does manifest itself, mm. I imagine it's much more uh, in your face and obvious. Uh, whereas, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll be called misogynists and, and generalizers, but. It, Women are, by and large, far more obsessed with themselves than are men. Uh, this, as you pointed mm. out in the art, uh, fa- f- the, how about how about the the drama arts? What's her name? Ensler or Eve, Eve Ensler? The vagina monologues. Mm. I mean, this uh, this collection yeah. of uh, well, it's, monologues, effective. Well, it, it's it's in almost every aspect we look at. I mean, the other day we were talking about. Uh, was it Jean-Paul Sartre yeah. and uh, and uh, what's her name? Uh, wow. uh, yeah, and, I mean, like the two of them were an item, and you compare you compare their works, and it's kind of like whether or not you agree with the existentialist ideas of of Sartre. Um, I don't know, don't pronounce his name right. Sartre, whatever. <laughs> you know, the the ideas in No Exit, for example. Like I've always loved that that phrase hell is other people yeah. um i mean whether or not you agree with these ideas it they're, they're fundamentally i think more interesting than you know dissertations on me and my vagina well yeah i mean uh, if you want to contrast the two Sartre and Beauvoir, Beauvoir, undoubtedly the most probably the most famous 20th century uh, philosopher female philosopher rather uh, as well as other philosophers, you, you just can't, the subject matter. You look at someone like Whitehead or Russell, Bertrand Russell and Alfred White, I mean, guys who are engaged in mathematical philosophy, history of philosophy, analysis of the world, uh, analyses of metaphysics, Sartre existential. I mean, how does man, no pun intended, come to terms with a world uh, that is effectively insane or just doesn't really make sense. You're, you're a universe devoid of meaning. I mean, these are real, these are issues that all of us struggle with in some deep level, I think, unless you sort of buy into the Kool Aid or you're not that bright. Whereas Bouvard was just going on about, well, effectively typical feminist claptrap. I have to admit, I've read a lot mm. more of Sartre than I ever did Bouvard just because I can't stomach her stuff very well, but <laughs> it's, um, you know, and, this is, I think, the fundamental issue that we just don't talk about, and maybe because your psych, you know, psychologist friend rightly pointed. I mean, if we were honest, yeah, all women on some level are, are are crazy. They would conform to various diagnoses in some psychiatric handbook, you know. Hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I guess it's just yeah. There, there just seems to be this fundamental difference in in focus of subject matter. Um, uh, another good example would be comedy. Um, mm, like there's, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's been the ongoing, I know Barbarossa has made a video about it. Um, I, this is a point that I think he might've, he might've missed on is that, um, there's this ongoing thing of, you know, why, why do people say women aren't funny? Um, you look at guys like George Carlin or Bill Hicks and yeah, they're always talking about these like societal wide, um, political problems that, you know, they, they kind of joke about and, you know, religion, war, politics. Um, there, there was a really, really telling skit by Amy Schumer called, I think it was called Julia Lewis Dreyfus's last fuckable day. Um, and basically, Amy Schumer's kind of 
jogging through the forest or whatever and she stumbles upon these three women having a picnic and it's it's uh dreyfus susan fay uh oh, sorry what's her name uh tina fay and some other comedian i can't remember who it was and i think it was tina fay basically looked at her and goes hey i recognize you you're that you're that uh girl from tv who's always talking about her pussy <laughs> and 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 amy schumer's like oh yeah you do know me and they i I don't it's hilarious that they can say that as a joke and not realize the implications of that like if it's all about me and my vagina and then when you compare that kind of humor to george carlin for example if george carlin basically had like an hour-long stand-up show that was just dick jokes no, like he would not have been popular. No, God, like people don't want to see that. I don't think people want to see it when women do it either. Guys don't because they don't. I mean, it's not a subject matter that they, you know, want want to want to know or care about. And I don't think the women really want to hear an hour of that either. For the most part, I think, you know, they a lot of the time they kind of politely wait their turn to talk about themselves, but they don't necessarily love hearing other women talk about themselves. Right. Um, well, once as I mentioned before, the vagina monologues, this 1990s piece about all things vaginal, menstruation, rape, genital mutilation, uh, etc., kind of in the same vein, more or less. Uh, me, 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 my vagina. Um, mm. And I'd agree with you. I think, obviously, one of those women like men with quote-unquote humor, uh, that is, men that can make them laugh, right? Um, women generally... Uh, lack that ability. Of course, they're not looking for most heterosexual women aren't looking for a mate and a woman. Um, but well, I mean, the science is in on this. I mean, there's quite a number of studies which have been done that uh, that show that women women do actually um, women do actually find men more attractive when they're humorous. There's even been studies on uh, on uh, dating websites that show that. Uh, females will sh- like have a higher a uh, higher likelihood to respond if a guy attempts to be humorous on his uh on his uh dating profile but men apparently show no such preference in in the females they like apparently humor humor has really no effect over the the level of attractiveness that the guy finds the girl yeah yeah well i mean because men are primarily interested in looks and um, I can imagine humor in a female, much like intelligence or education, being a kind of compensatory mechanism. Um, mm. You know, but let's be honest, online dating sites, these are effectively let, leftover women for whatever reason. Um, good-looking women mm. in real life have plenty of suitors and people hitting on them, men hitting on them. They don't really need to sign up uh, to, uh, to an online dating site, so... That would be another factor, I mm. think, as well, uh, that the women who are well, I mean, up there anyway are, are a bit odd, at the very least. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. I, 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 I mean, you'd have to read the uh, the actual workings of the study, whether or not they were just random women from the dating website or whether or not they were actual study participants. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, I mean... Again, I mean, women are capable of being funny. Like, I think, I mean, T- Tina Fey is probably, I would say, Tina Fey is pretty, pretty funny. Um, Amy Palmer uh, from Parks and Rec, I mean, she's she's pretty good too. Like, really good um, comic timing, interesting subject matter and stuff. But again, um, you look at Thirty Rock and you look at uh, you look at um, Parks and Rec. It's not all about her and her vagina. Like, there's more going on than that. Um, yeah. but I, I think, I think they're kind of like the exceptions to the rule. Yeah. I mean, they're always, uh, I, think, I don't, I never remember a name. There's an 18th century female polymath who actually made some decent contributions to mathematics, but I mean, there are exceptions to the rule when these women, of course, will be highlighted. I mean, mm. this is, this is the thing though, about, uh, about that kind of, to my nerves, I do think women are, as you pointed out, capable of doing these things. Um, mm. It's uh, it's not uh, to me. It's just 
I mean, but the, as always, lack of incentive. Why? Why? If women don't need to be humorous, then why would they be? If they don't need to be skilled artists, why would they be? Um, this is the problem, and I, I've seen this. You know, it's obviously anecdotal, but I do repeatedly or have repeatedly seen this compensatory mechanism in women who, frankly speaking, aren't hot enough or fat or whatever. Where whereas they they actually become quite good at something, you know. Um, hmm just because they're not really left with much choice. There aren't suitors at their, at their beck and call all the time. Um, and so, I mean, this is a, a bit hairballed, I suppose, but one could propose a theory that the women who are most successful at reproducing are the ones that look really good. Uh, correspondingly, they're also the ones who probably develop their talents the least and have the least to offer. So mm. th that's why we have, I guess, this... I guess you want to call it maybe talent phenotype in abundance, uh, whereas, you know, the fat, ugly chick and or her chances of reproducing are much, uh, much lower. And so you're not going to get as, as, as much of this type. Yeah, I mean, again, I think I don't know if it's all down to that. Um, I mean, I've got a lot of interests. Uh, I mean, I I wish I was a grandmaster at chess, but. There's other things in my life that kind of take up the time for that. I don't think it's necessarily that women just don't, they don't need to, so they don't do it. Um, I would suspect that there are a lot of women. I mean, I went to school with a lot of, uh, art school with a lot of women that obviously did want to be artists. But yeah, the, I think the problem is that when it comes time to the application, yeah, there's just like a fundamental there's a fundamental difference in in what kind of interests and drives men and women um, in in those kind of creative pursuits, and I just I think that um, in general what drives women to create art, um, whether it be painting, uh, written literature, you know the performing arts, it's just I don't think it's as interesting to a, as wider audience as what men men explore. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I do. I have to say, I do subscribe to the idea that uh, although men might, on average, have greater technical skill at various things, it's just I do think there's a, a lack of motivation uh, to 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 do certain things. I mean, men don't get off on women's status, right? So there's no motivation mm. for a woman to become an amazing artist. I mean, here are these stories, uh, alleged stories of women with insanely high IQs, like 160 plus. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's basically talking about finding a husband or something. I mean, they don't, there's no, sure, intelligent, but they don't want to do anything with it. And I think that is a, a mm. major contributing factor um, in effectively what you might call female mediocrity. Yeah. Um, because if you don't need to do something, why do it? You know, do you, uh, the skills that you have, for example, let's say you're effectively born with a silver spoon in your mouth and for the rest of your life you had like, I don't know, 500,000 kangaroo dollars every year to do whatever the fuck you want. I mean, would, do you think you would have, as possibly you might pursue your interests, I mean, who knows, but many of the skills you have, uh, as refined as they are, probably wouldn't be as refined because the need... Um, the need just wouldn't be there. I mean, this is my, I guess it's conviction, but I just think if you could artificially manufacture a situation, which would be impossible, where men on on mass lost interest in sex over several decades, it couldn't be just over a year, or maybe just a decade, uh, I think you could, despite women's natural inclinations, they would develop at least some degree of greater interest in sex and and... And perhaps even, to some degree, pursue men on some level, just because question of scarcity and need. I don't know. I think I think necessity is the mother of all invention, ultimately. And, yeah, that's kind of my, my view on this. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I guess so. I think that's, that's true in a lot of cases. I think there may be some differences when it comes to areas of uh, self-expression, um, I mean, a, a, a good example would be, I mean, I put a lot of effort into my videos on, on YouTube. Um, my channel's not monetized and I'm certainly not going to, you know, 
you know, I'm certainly not going to get female praise heap, heaped upon me for the videos that I make. Um, sometimes there are just there is just a drive to express yourself or express the world around you. Um, I mean, undoubtedly, there are a lot of there, there are a lot of people. I think music's probably the best example. The music scene is probably the the best example of guys that. Um, want to become rock stars they they have this idea that somehow they're going to make it um but i mean there are other people that just kind of make music because it makes them feel good and they they do that um uh, so i think there there may be some some differences in the in the area like it's not quite the same as as you know i'm going off to work the the shitty job that i hate but it pays well and eventually i might get a promotion and then get paid even more like it's not I, I think a lot of people pursue um pursue the arts and will probably never make it but they do it because they enjoy it rather than trying to like necessarily trying to climb the status hierarchy yeah i suppose i, I mean, mean i so, some do i mean you look at picasso picasso was probably <laughs> A, a businessman first and, a, and an artist second. So, I mean, it does exist, but I think the vast majority of people that, that practice art don't necessarily do it to, to climb the status hierarchy. Yeah, I, I would imagine. Um, I mean, there there's something satisfying, though, say, even, you know, be, being an amateur gamer and, uh, work and, and, and playing competitively, though, to, you know, something satisfying in improving your skill. Uh, I mean, there, there are no accolades. Mm. Uh, involved and you're not going to be rewarded apart from some sense of satisfaction but um mm. yeah i mean th there are definitely activities i do that that have you know nothing well, i'm not terribly interested in climbing any status hierarchy myself that but are nonetheless i can look at from a from an evolutionary perspective and say well why do i take say competitive overwatch <laughs> rather seriously and try to you know look at the mistakes i make and improve um you know i can i could give you an evolutionary account of that i could also say oh, i just kind of enjoy it but um you know there's no real necessity for that um uh, in some sense uh, but yeah i mean I, I i take your point i just think that it would be a fascinating experiment if we could somehow you know flip the world upside down and just i don't know create on mass a, a sexual disinterest in men just as an, as an example and to see how how women uh, would would react. And we already get. I mean, men who, I mean, this is men who show relative disinterest in women, but have some kind of status, tend to be attracted to women. So there's that too. So I do think that there's something to that. Um, hmm. And this kind of goes back to some of Barbarossa's earlier work. Uh, I think he was accurate in observing that women are capable, but there's just no incentive. Um, there wasn't an hmm. incentive in, in previous uh, eras because of the acute dangers that existed and the fact that men were for better or worse protectors and providers and uh, there's no incentive now because women pretty much get everything they want from the state and society so um yeah it, it just doesn't i don't i don't really see that happening but i think from a theoretical framework whether it comes to art or competitive gaming or anything else um the incentive theory is is a is a strong one you, you see this cult chain from uh, this has been talked about by Girl Rights Watch well, years ago, but compare, you know, women in places like Iran and India who pursue degrees in computer science and engineering to a much uh, greater extent mm. than Norwegian women who just go become nurses and teachers, you know, where, you know, the most gender egalitarian society on earth, allegedly, you get uh, women naturally doing what they want to do. So I, yeah. I, I do see the incentive well, factor there. Well, I mean, this is it, though. I mean, the, the, I mean, they do have the highest. See, this uh, they call it the the gender equality paradox, where they do, um, there are more women employed in those countries, like um, as a relative ratio of the workforce. But yeah, because they are free to pursue whatever they want, they yeah they pursue nursing. And I think, I mean, that's kind of what I was saying. Uh, I mean, that kind of fits what I was saying about art where i don't think they're incapable and i think a lot of women do like to pursue art but the problem is that the the subject matter that they want to pursue is me 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 oh well i, I, don't, I, don't, wanna... I don't doubt that i mean um you know i think you mentioned uh 
some woman you were involved with who who was an engineer, but really had no interest. I mean, mm. she I guess she did her job okay, but it, it was just a means to a comfortable yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, and that goes back to what I said before. I mean, people will do shit jobs to climb the status hierarchy, but when it comes to self-expression, I think a lot of women do want to express themselves. Um, they they do want to be good at art. They do want to create art. The problem is just, yeah, the, the fact is that as long as their art is about me, 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 um, you know, it's it's not interesting to a lot of people. Like, no, agreed. I mean, the guys aren't going to care. Most women aren't going to care. Well, it's yeah. just, it's not really a very interesting, it's it, like, yeah, it's just not a very interesting subject matter, I don't think. No, I, I would agree. Um, you know, the, and you think about cinema as well. Um, it's, it's, it's not universally so, but it, it's, it also has that sort of uh, me focus. Although, so I think of something like um, Lost in Translation with Bill Murray and what's her name, mm. uh, Johansson, the, well, um, from the early two uh, thousands. Uh, Scarlett, Scarlett by, Johansson. Yeah, that was by Sophia uh, Coppola, what's her name, the, Coppola, the daughter of Sophia uh, Coppola of the uh, Francis right. Ford. Now, I, to be fair, I think she gave a offered decent treatment towards the male as well, but it was clearly about this, you know, a young female who's lost in a marriage, trying to figure her life out. Um, hmm. that seems to be quite con- also in cinema, quite a commonplace thing. In um, in uh, but, or, or how I this I forgot the directress, directress, the direct whatever the female director's name of American Psycho. But that's a real. Uh, I'm trying to marry yeah. something, something. Marry. I don't recall her name. In any event, that, my interpretation of that film, as well as the book which I read ages ago. Is very different from it. her whole thing. Is you know this is about I don't know power and exploitation and blah 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 blah. And I don't think she really sees the kind of struggle. She might partially see the struggle that a guy like Patrick Bateman is going through internally, but it's much more about the you know everyone hates women and this is all superficial and blah blah blah. I think that even mm-hmm. in the case where you get a, a, a film where you get a fair bit of, of depth. Um, there are going to be different interpretations that, that can arise from uh, being male or uh, or being female. Mm. Yeah, so, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's a shame that we can't really test out the incentive theory because, although apart from you know poor countries where the incentives naturally exist, you know, women want to get out of poverty or what have you. But yeah, yeah, the, it's. Well, I mean, in the, like I said, I mean, in the case of art, a lot of the time, you know, people are pretty well aware that they're probably not going to become the next Picasso. Um, you know, the old the old joke being that, you know, you're never going to be a famous artist until you're dead anyway. Um, it, it's it's interesting. Like a lot of the a lot of the women that I went to art school with, despite being the big strong feminists. They were at art school while, like, I was working. <laughs> I worked a night job. But, uh, yeah, a lot of the women that I went to art school with, um, they went to art school and the husband went off and worked a manual fucking labor job to pay the bills. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I don't think I don't think that that need, um, you know, the, the – that that need for for money and stuff or six like necessarily success was a is as big of a component in in art as it is with other jobs. Oh, I'd agree, I'd agree um, with that. That's true. I I was maybe a bit different because I was always. I mean, I went through art school. I was actually I was actually done. I'd done some uh, some television work before I even went to art school, um, and I already knew how to use a lot of the. Uh, I think at the time. At the time, I think I was using Lightwave to do my my graphic stuff, so I kind of already knew the software. But it was like um, I wanted to learn more of the fundamentals about composition and color theory and that sort of shit to apply. Like I basically wanted to take those skills and then apply that to a a more um, like a, a more tangible. Uh, you know, corporate job. Mm-hmm. So I kind of always had the the idea that I was going to 
go through art school and apply those skills to a more uh, um, profitable. It, it, yeah, a more profitable vocation. Whereas I think a lot of the the people that I went to art school with, I think the only people from art school that have really gotten jobs related to uh, their training are basically they after after art school they went and did a diploma of education and now they teach art to other students um but there's, there's not really a large sort of area for vocational success f- from from that training i don't think mm. yeah no i'd, I'd agree um, i mean this is to- or this is just pure speculation uh what do you think about the theory that female artists are kind of crazy <laughs> Well, I mean, all women are crazy. Right. How crazy are we talking about? Well, I don't know. what 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 flavor of crazy are we talking about? Well, the, this is you know the, the this is purely anecdotal. The idea that f- there's something about female artists and um, they're just more inclined to you know depression and personality disorders. That could be true of all artists, I imagine, though. Also, uh, men. Well. I I would say it is. I would say a lot of the people I went to art school. I would say. The people I went to art school with, there was a higher rate of things like, uh, you know, bipolar disorder and manic, like, you know, depression and things like that um, amongst the students, both male and female. Um, I would say that it art school definitely does attract the more radical feminist types. Um, and I think that that could be a component of it as well, like the, the feminists... Had, I mean, they, they certainly have a bit of a, a clique. And I think um, there was one girl that I went to art school with who was actually, she was quite shy and not not related to that whole thing at all. And she used to, she used to do these interesting paintings that kind of look like, you know, like shots from 1950s films or something. Oh, I guess uh, some someone like an artist to compare it to would be like, uh, what's his name? Edward Hopper, I mm. think. I like used to do these these you know sort of fifties Americana paintings of like diners and things, but there was always something kind of dark about them. Um, but yeah, because she wasn't doing the whole you know me 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 feminist art like the rest of them, she was actually I mean she was basically shunned by the uh, by most of the females in the class. They they didn't really hang out with her. They didn't associate with her. So I think um, that could be part of it too. Like the, um, like we often talk about the female in-group preference. You know, you got to ask how how much is that uh, is that you know in-group preference actually enforced rather than just um, autonomously arrived at? Well, right. I mean, that, I mean, this is now famous. The <laughs> This in your own country, this uh, spat between the the two anchor women, uh, Julie. Mm. I don't remember their name. Uh, Hook, Cook, Am- A- Amber something, and, and Snook. Snook, wasn't Snook it? Right, Julie Snook being the younger, more attractive version, and and the, the middle one, the middle aged one, just going off on her about wearing white sleeveless yeah, didn't, shirt. Or didn't something. didn't she? She didn't wear a jacket, right, a black <laughs> jacket, because you know they they were you know, all wearing white. And then you can see the camera goes on officially, and the, the smiles just plaster on their faces. And I, I, I think mm. the, when we talk about the Borg consensus, I think oftentimes we're talking about something that is kind of artificial. Um, everyone's sort mm. of naughty and pretending they all like it. I mean, I reckon that there are plenty of women who are endorsing pumpkin spice lattes on online uh, during autumn. Maybe they like it, maybe they don't. Maybe just some people really... You know, they think it's average, but they they say, oh, look at my pumpkin spice latte. Because women follow trends. I mean, women are, I think their behavior is very much modulated by the way the world perceives them uh, and how the outside mm. is, uh, world is looking at them. Um, they lack yeah. much, they, they I, not completely, but they lack that same internal compass that, that men have. Um, men kind of just mm. do their own thing regardless. I mean, yeah. and women don't. Well, I, I was... I was, it was interesting. I had a, an exchange with Girl Rights What in the comments section ages ago, and she brought something up, um, about game theory, and it kind of got me thinking. So I went and had a look online to see if I could find any, uh, 
any any if any studies had been done about sort of gender differences in the uh, the prisoners dilemma. And uh, there was an article I think it might have been on Psychology Today, but it was it was really interesting because when you look at the overall scores, there wasn't a huge difference between you know overall male and female scores. The big difference came in as to whether or not they were making their decisions on the prisoner's dilemma and being viewed by outsiders or um, or people within their own group. Uh, and it was, it was kind of like men actually, men were interesting in that they, when they were only being viewed by their internal group, they were much more argumentative and they, they were much more forthright about giving their opinion on the matter. Um, even if it disagreed with everyone else in the rest of the group. Whereas when they were being observed, when the men were being observed by um, others, you know, the people from the other group, they actually put on a show of, of, um, of group cohesion and agreed with everything. And basically the opposite happened with females. When females were being viewed by their in-group, they were much more likely to agree with the in-group but they were they were more likely to to shiv their own group in the back when they were being viewed by the the other group. Mm. Well, that would that would be reflective like of, the, of by, by <clears throat> men, yeah. That would be reflective, I think, <clears throat> of of real world real world, world circumstances. Think about you know war brides yeah. and you know. Yeah, well, that that was actually how the conversation started. Was that um, I think there was it was a discussion on war brides and. Girl writes what had brought up the fact that, um, you know, the Yan- the Yanomami, uh, there was like some Yanomami tribe that was being attacked and they ran off and the, uh, the, the, um, some of the women got caught and as soon as they were caught, they basically sold out the other women from their own in group, um, to gain grace with the out, out group that they'd just been caught by and girl writes what was like, you know, what, what would be the, the psychological, um, basis for that behavior if they have you know such a strong in-group preference and yeah i mean this this research would seem to be you know perfectly support that i mean they, they're only <laughs> they're only they're only uh loyal to the in-group as long as they're in the presence of other members of the in-group yeah yeah um and this is something that i think that should be more well explored to a greater degree just uh, like so many things, we're, we're left with uh, with the anecdotal because real world psychology and biology doesn't really want to explore these things in greater depth because mm. it's unflattering to certain people. Yeah, well, I mean, there, there is some research out there, like what I just mentioned. I guess the problem the problem is how far can you take, you know, a, a safe laboratory study that examines gender differences. I mean, th- this is one of the things as well, is I, I look at that nice, safe study that, about the prisoner's dilemma where they're, they're theoretically trying to measure how, you know, the gender... They're, they're theoretically trying to measure gender differences in in uh, risk assessment in a safe environment. I would suspect that if, if you had, you know, actual Nazis pointing guns at people that you wouldn't see a 50-50 score there. No. Even 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 as an overall score, I don't think you'd see a 50-50 split. No, no. Um, well, I mean, that's evidence by the fact you know, that, you know... Uh, yeah, well, I mean, there is anecdotal evidence, I guess, about war brides, but, yeah, I mean, ethics being what it is, we can't actually point real loaded no, guns no. at people to, to get them to fill in a survey for a psych experiment. <laughs> um, it, you know, ethics... Um, scientific ethics being what it is, I mean, it's possible that we'll never have any good quantifiable numbers on this. Which leads to the unfortunate conclusion, at least in the eyes of many, that all of this is, can be regarded as speculative and thus should be dismissed outright. I mean, I I remember, uh, I'm going to be making a video about this, a discussion that Kraut and T had with some alt-right people Um and I remember just disagreeing with something that he said. He said that you know trends don't decide what society is. And I thought, thought to myself, well, what 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 does decide that? Just ideals. I mean, he went on this big rant about it doesn't matter how much evidence there is if you can't conduct an, an actual experiment, you can sort of just dismiss it out outright. And I thought, well, 
there goes a whole lot of science that is highly relevant and and highly important um, as far as explaining mm. human behavior because you know you, you can't I don't know create a basically a put it in a lab room with a repl- replicability and what have you it just it sounded very I don't mm. know if he was trying to be evasive or not but I mean this is a fundamental mm. problem we face and I think well those of us who want to explore human nature uh, are going to be stuck with this. I mean, I'm in the process mm. of um, constructing, I guess, an evolutionary theory of romantic detachment, and I don't want to reveal too much because I just started scripting it, but there's not a lot of hard, you know, no one's actually even run experiments on this. So what I've been doing, and, uh, you know, who knows if this will be successful or not, is um, looking at data from anthropology in terms of mortality rates and and conflict and, and just trying to come up, I don't want to talk too much about it, but trying to come up with a theory that also could be uh, used in a modern context. And I think that's what we're left with. We have to take what we can uh, and, and mm. sort of do our best with it. And, and we will always be yeah. subject to fair or unfair criticism because of it, because it's just not, you know, it's not yeah, two, well, two plus two equals four or whatever. I, well, I mean, and I guess that's the thing. I mean, just because we can't put it in a lab, I mean, like I said, like given the fact that a lab is a safe condition, um, e- like a safe environment, even the numbers that we can generate are probably not going to be totally reflective of a true risk-filled situation. But that doesn't mean that we can't that, that we can say nothing about it. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you know across you know, whether we're talking about Yanomami tribes or we're talking about, you know, the the French French women under the Nazi occupation. I mean, the the war brides are enough of a consistent thing that we can say, yeah, I mean, it happens. It seems to be a consistent behaviour. Mm-hmm. Um I mean it we but just because just because we we can't actually put a number on it doesn't mean that that we can't know about it. I mean, that's one of the things. I mean, the reason I know about that whole um, uh, the gender differences and and some of the studies that have been done as far as uh, humour is concerned and like attraction as a result of of um, of humour is because it was related to the old video that I did um, the gender attraction differential. Um, there are a lot of people that complained about that video on the basis that, oh, he's only talking about looks and women are interested in in things beyond that, like personality and stuff. And I'm like, they are, but, you know, the looks and the mass data available from OkCupid and Tinder is a good starting point. I mean, when we look at the at humour, we see the exact same gender different, like gender attraction differential, right? Like women, women care about whether a man has a sense of humour. Men don't necessarily have that same preference, but you know, it's humour is such a subjective thing that we can't. We, there's no, there's no good quantifiable. Like we know that same difference exists, but we don't have a good quantifiable number to start from to make a. An analysis like I did in that video. Well, you work. That's, that's you work with what you have, right? And there's an interesting aspect yeah. to this, Coltane. You know, and I think it's actually a, 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 a essentially a pro for the kinds of things we like to explore. Well, you know, in, as you pointed out, in a lab or what have you, in a or controlled experiment, everything's controlled. So you're 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 losing a degree of naturalness, right? If we observe mm. mass societal trends, whether it comes to you know divorce rates, women's reasons for divorce. And higher rates of initiation, uh, reasons for splitting up, etc. I mean, none of that's controlled, and yet we can tease out a essentially a, a consensus uh, based on mm. these observations, which probably is much more accurate than anything you could ever get in a, in a lab. And saying, "Well, here's yeah. what we find out." Well, I mean, this this is also one of those things. I mean. Uh, the thing gets thrown around a lot, you know, what is good art, you know, I mean, without even getting into the argument of, you know, what constitutes art, you know, if we just talk about what constitutes good art, um, I mean, music, music might be a good place to start. Um, there is a reason why Led Zeppelin was so popular and still are popular today, but many, many musicians in between are just, 
you know, it, like either one hit wonders or people that never even made it in the first place. I mean, there are, hmm. it is, it is subjective, but there are still certain things that are, appeal to people on such a mass scale that you can sort of say, you know, this is, this is objectively popular. Um, I think uh, Barbarossa did a, a video. I think it might have been his, his Gamergate rape and terror management theory video um because i re-watched it recently where he actually talked about the fact that uh there, there's been research done where they put people in i think like fmri machines and basically scanned their brains while they were watching movies and then they overlaid the data from about eight other people and their emotional like what was happening in the brain their actual neurological responses to what was happening on the screen were almost exactly the same for every person. Um, so despite the fact that, you know, it's subjective and everyone's a special snowflake, they're not that special. They're not, they're not that much of a snowflake. There are some fundamental things like, I mean, there are reasons why, you know, like I mentioned before, when I went to art school, it was to learn the fundamentals like composition and color theory. The reason that, that composition and color theory exists is because there are, there are some fundamental rules in the human brain as to what, what sort of compositions we like and what sort of colors we like to see next to each other. Yeah, absolutely. Like it, it seems you think it's subjective. Everyone says it's subjective, but it's not, it's not, it's really not as like what we, what we like to consume on a mass scale is really not as subjective as what you'd think. No, and, and that's the whole point. That and so and thus observations made based on that can be very, very accurate and very relevant. Um, yeah. So absolutely interesting uh, stuff. I think. Well, always interesting to talk talk to you about this, um, particularly with regards to the artistic stuff, um, since uh, it's something I've kind of observed too, to some degree. The more so in, I guess, drama and the written arts. Um, but yeah, that, there's that consistent thread of <laughs> me syndrome, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Uh, so, so <laughs> this is a, you know rhetorical question. Colton, why why do men deal with women then if if they're all like that? <laughs> well, because they're. <laughs> Like much like the reason the rule of thirds work and red and green should not be seen, they do it because they're biologically programmed to. <laughs> really, there you have it, folks. The uh, the final the final answer the the final judgment. All right, well, thanks for tuning in to uh, this discussion. Um, I will be posting a link to Coltane's most recent video. It's very good, very uh, well organized. I think you'll enjoy it if you haven't checked it out yet. And he's working on other stuff, and I've started working on my own scripted video, although when that'll be out is, you know, don't know, because there's a lot to be done. But uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and thanks for tuning in. And thank you for joining me. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.